What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing an update for my halfway point in this 90 day just another muggle fat loss challenge just in case you don't know this just another muggle is something i've been doing on my instagram if you don't follow me follow me right here rico's behind the camera by the way thank you rico for all your hard work this just another muggle it's my way of showing you that you know i'm not a elite bodybuilder i'm not a physique competitor i'm not like anything crazy my physique isn't just like miraculous to like i'm just an, another another person another muggle if you don't know what a muggle is google it and if you it basically means you haven't read the harry potter series so you should definitely read the harry potter series because what the fuck are you doing not reading that a muggle is just a non-magical person it's no one special just a regular human so i'm showing you my fat loss journey and showing you that even though I, I, I don't have any amazing, an amazing physique or anything crazy or special, I can do it, which means you can too. It really is, it's just about being patient and consistent. And that's really the majority of it. And that's what I'm showing you along the way. In this video, I wanna go over what I've done thus far, how well it's going, where I've done well, where I've not done well, and what I aim to improve in the second half and what also I expect to see. We've been seeing on your story, like your weight's been fluctuating a ton lately. Yep. Can you talk about like why that's happening? Yeah. So first and foremost, if you are not following on Instagram, in my daily weight highlight, you're going to see my daily weigh-in every single morning from day one until right now, and I'll do it all the way until the end of this 90-day challenge. And what you'll see is where my weight started, how it fluctuated up, went down, fluctuated up, went down, fluctuated up, went down, and you'll see that every data point along the way, my weight's going all over the place. And if you only look at the individual data points, it doesn't even seem to make sense. When you look at the graph as a whole, which we'll put like right here or something, we'll put the graph so you can see, it follows a very consistent pattern of starting here, fluctuation up, drop, fluctuation up, drop, fluctuation up, drop. And then when you draw the line, it is a downward trend. And this is what's so important to look at. And by the way, we filmed a video on the three most common weight loss fluctuation patterns. It was a huge hit. People loved this video. It will show you what to expect in terms of your weight fluctuations so that you can identify how your weight will fluctuate up. So you can predict when your weight is going to spike and you can predict when it's going to drop so you can stay consistent and not give up. And if you want to watch that video, the link is both in the description or you could just click right here, click this card, it's going to come right up. Now, I'm not going to go too in depth on why my weight fluctuated now. If you really want to see literally everything you can know about why your weight fluctuates, watch that video. But briefly, the way I like to phrase this is if you look at my weight fluctuating in this graph, you'll see it would be spiked and then steep drop, spike, boom, steep drop. And this happens like every seven to 10 days consistently. It's not just once. This is a very common pattern. And it's very important that you look at your weight loss on a month to month basis. June 1 to July 1 to August 1, September 1, June 2nd, July 2nd, August 2nd, September 2nd, June 3rd, July 3rd, August 3rd, September 3rd. You do it month to month because within every month, you'll have a lot of different things going on. There's a lot of different hormonal spikes. There's a lot of different stressors going on. You can't do it day to day or even every week to week. When you look at your weight every month on that daily month, then you can see that downward trend and that's what we're going for. And that's how we know we're being so successful so far because right now we're about halfway in started around like 147, 148, and now my low at this point is just about like 140, 141 in what, five, six weeks? That's literally right around about, right about like six pounds a week, or one pound a week on average. That's another point. When people say lose one to two pounds a week on average, that means even though they logically know this emotionally, when they lose, when they have a week where they don't lose a pound, they're like, well, I didn't lose a pound this week. What's going on? But if you actually look at the past month, on average, they might have lost on average four pounds for one pound a week. And that's what's important to remember. If you know that on average, a pound a week is really good, and you have maybe two weeks where you don't lose anything, you have to look at the greater whole. If you've been doing this for six weeks and you've lost a total of six pounds, that's great. Regardless of even if you've only if you haven't lost weight for two weeks in a row, because it's the average that really is the most important. If you're doing this, if you're following along with me, if you're doing the Just Another Mogul Challenge, if you're weighing in, remember, look at your weight on that month to month basis, 
the spikes are normal and watch that video so you really understand the pattern that you're gonna follow. Before you started this fat loss phase, you even said like, if I'm not getting stronger in a deficit, then my training's off, my nutrition's off, and you actually hit a goal of yours that you were wanting to, and what was that goal? Yeah, so I deadlifted 405. <laughs> If you've been following me for years, you know that's not like a, a massive personal record. I used to deadlift over 500 pounds, but after taking a long time off, I couldn't deadlift 405 about eight weeks ago. It just wasn't coming off the ground at all. 315, I got for one about eight weeks ago. That was tough. You can, we can even play those videos. I decided when I started getting back into deadlifting, I was like, I wanna hit 405. And we made like this road to 405 goal of mine. Keeping in mind, this was about eight weeks ago. It's not that long when you really think about it. Let's say you have eight weeks. Let's say within eight weeks, on average, I had one lower body day per week. Ideally, I would have liked to have two, but honestly, it didn't happen for a number of reasons. Travel, work, whatever. I'd say on average, I had one lower body day per week. That's eight workouts. Eight total lower body workouts in eight weeks. I went from 315 all the way to 405. Now, I want to make it very clear. It's much easier to reach a level of strength you've previously been at than it is to build up that strength for the first time. So I don't expect anybody to go from a max of 315 to a max of 405 in eight weeks. That is insanity. But what is important to remember, a lot of people, they take a week off because they're sick. They take a week off because of vacation. They have some time off. Maybe you take a year or two off like I did. I took like the better part of two years Really, it's not that I stopped working out, but I stopped doing it consistently. I stopped really taking it very seriously. And I didn't deadlift very much because like it was number one, I travel all the time. I don't really have access to a deadlift bar all the time, but I also just didn't put in that effort. So to come back from two years of really not giving it my all, most people would be like, am I ever gonna get back there? Am I ever gonna get back to where I wanna be? And in eight workouts, I'm just re in eight lower body workouts over the course of eight weeks, reach my goal of 405. Keeping in mind the first probably three to four workouts, awful. They felt terrible. Most people within those first three to four workouts would quit because it didn't feel amazing. They couldn't do what they used to be able to do. By the fifth, sixth, seventh workout, I was feeling good. I was feeling really good. And by I think it was the sixth or seventh week, I got sick, I got super sick and I had to miss an entire week. So when I came back, then that seventh week felt really bad, came back, had a great workout, and then I hit the four or five the following week. So it's very easy to let the, your emotion within any given day, any given workout, really influence you to make you think that you're not gonna ever reach your goal, to make you think you're losing progress, to make you think that you're not doing well. And it is vitally important not to let that emotion dictate your action to turn into quitting. The only reason that I went into eventually hitting this 405 in eight workouts is because I knew that as long as I stuck with it, I'd get there. And it literally took eight workouts. It's great, it's all documented. It's, it's amazing, I love this. Re having Rico here is a blessing. And doing this challenge has been life-changing for me in showing you how valuable consistency is. It's literally all it is, it's just consistency and not giving up. Because as soon as you give up, that's when you fail. And if people really knew, if you really understood how much you could accomplish just from not quitting, you would go far above and beyond what most people could ever imagine. In regard to Rico's question about essentially how did you get stronger while being in a deficit, this is really important, getting stronger does not equate to getting bigger muscles. This is really, really important. A lot of people hear getting stronger and they think bigger muscles. And when they think bigger muscles, then they think muscle hypertrophy, calorie surplus. And then they think calorie surplus, so obviously not calorie deficit and not fat loss. This is a very convoluted and incorrect way of thinking. When you want to gain strength, that does not equate to getting a bigger muscle. It means making a stronger muscle. One of my favorite quotes from Louis Simmons, 
Big isn't strong. Strong is strong. And there's a really, really important concept to understand in terms of muscle strength, muscle power, rate of force development, is how good your brain is at telling your muscles to fire, how efficient it is, how strong it is, how powerful it is. And while a bigger muscle has the potential to be a stronger muscle, it is not definitively a stronger muscle. And one of the easiest ways to explain this visually is think about gymnasts. Look at these tiny gymnasts, 90 pounds, 100 pounds, but they're strong as fucking a brick wall. They're fucking like an ox, it's crazy. They have this unbelievable super, superhuman strength, but they're so tiny. You don't need to be huge in order to be strong. It's a long roundabout way of saying, if you're focused on losing fat and you're in a calorie deficit, not only can you gain strength, you should be gaining strength. If your training is in check, if your nutrition is in check, you absolutely not only can, but should get stronger while you're losing fat. So yesterday you told me you had a quote unquote day. And <laughs> yep. what, what was that like and how do you structure that? And like, what, how did you incorporate that to your fat loss phase? Got it, okay. So a lot of people would call these a cheat day. And personally, I'm not a fan of calling them a cheat day because long story short, cheating implies that you're doing something wrong, that you're doing something bad, that you're eating something that you should never be eating. And I don't like that because I think you should be able to eat whatever it is you wanna be able to eat as long as it fits within your guidelines. And even if it doesn't fit in your guidelines, that's okay. Rico and I just call them a fuck it day because you're just like, ah, fuck it, whatever. Sometimes it's good to have those days. So what I wanna do is I wanna make a separate video explaining exactly how I structure my fuck it days and how, not only how I structure it, but why I structure it and how you can do them if you decide that maybe you wanna have some fuck it days into your fat loss phase so you can continue losing fat while being able to really enjoy your favorite foods and even strategically going over your calories without feeling like you ruined all your progress. So if you want me to make that video, please comment below and say like, hell yes for the fuck it days. Let me know in the comments and that way we can make that video and structure it, use the whiteboard, really go in depth to show you how you can make those in the best way and the most effective way for you to keep losing fat and sort of enjoying the process too. So to wrap up this update, what is one thing you're doing really well and one thing you wanna improve on moving forward? Got it, great question. So I think one thing I've been doing very well, and this is actually, I got a lot of a lot of messages about this is I've been very non-emotional in respect to, for example, if my weight fluctuates up, cool. If I have a bad workout, okay. And it is what it is. I have much more perspective now than I ever have in my entire life in terms of training and nutrition and fitness. And it's very easy to tell people, hey, don't let it get to you. It's another thing to actually embody it and do it and live it. And I think in this specific phase, I've been the least emotional and the most logical I've ever been in my entire life with my fitness in terms of, for example, I have, there's this rule of five for workouts. And basically the rule of five goes, for every five workouts, you'll have one amazing workout. You'll have one god awful workout and three workouts that are more just like, eh, got through it. And I think most people, when they have that one god awful one, it's the worst, they'll cry, they'll think everything is just go, is going down the drain, like what's going on? With this workout, they get super excited, like everything is going amazing, and this is the best, I'm a blah, all that whatever. And then these like, sometimes they're good and sometimes they're not so good. It's very easy to let the emotions that you get from these really take you super high, super low. For me, learning how to, whether it's the best workout ever or the worst workout ever, not letting it take me in either direction and just saying, cool, I'm just gonna keep on going. That I think has allowed me to be super consistent. So I think for me, the best thing I've done, the thing I'm really proud of for myself and really proud of to be able to show you is how logical I've been and how non-emotional I've been, which I'm really happy about. The thing that I want to improve on is my sleep. <laughs> and this is something that I say because my sleep, to be quite frank, that sounded very posh, to be quite frank with you, but to be, to be very honest with you and candid, which is what I've been trying to do this entire time, is awful. My sleep patterns are terrible. Um, it's not because I'm, I'm watching TV or I don't even have a TV in my apartment. It's mainly because my time management isn't always the best. A lot of times I'll just stay up all night and work, whether it's doing emails, client programs, inner circle stuff. Other nights, I'll just watch political shit on YouTube. <laughs> I've gotten super into politics recently and I'll just watch all these different 
people and opinions and I'm just like super into it. And that's just like, it'll go five hours. I'll be like, how the hell is it 4 a.m. already? So I will say probably six out of seven days, it's from work and like actually doing client work and inner circle work. And one day of the week, it's just from like diving too deep into the depths of YouTube and just being up way too late. Either way, when I don't get enough sleep, for several days in a row. Of course, my training goes to shit. And if my training goes to shit, obviously like I'm not gonna get the results I want. That's why I've, on average, I've only gotten one lower body workout in a week, not two, which I think I, realistically, I think I should be able to get two. Just be an adult, stop treating your sleep like an asshole and sleep better. That's what I have to do for myself. But not only are my results not as good, but also filming with Rico, goes to shit because if I don't get a training session in, that means that Rico doesn't get to film me and we'd lose out on content. As crazy as it sounds for me, my nutrition has been tremendously on point, even when I don't sleep well, which is very, I know a lot of people really struggle with their nutrition when they don't sleep well, when they're, they're up more and they end up binging and they just boredom eat. I'm fortunate in that very rarely am I ever bored. I really think that boredom is sort of that enemy of dieting. When you're bored, you just sort of eat because why not? What else do you have to do? I'm in a very fortunate situation in which I'm like never bored. I'm just, all, I always have stuff to do, which I think prevents me from just munching. My lack of sleep, I think I've had more off, more bad workouts than I should have because of my lack of sleep. I would bet a lot of money that if I got better sleep, for the remainder of this 90 day challenge, my workouts would on the whole net better. I would get not only more in, but more quality in. And I would encourage you to do your best to be as objective as you can with what you need to improve on. Most people, myself included, it's not easy to be objective and say, this is what you really suck at. Most people are like, I swear I'm doing everything great. I swear it's all good. I swear this is, it must be my hormones. It must be my age. It must be something else. This is, this is it's not me because I'm doing it. I'm doing everything right. But then when you really look at it, it's like, are you really tracking your calories? Like really including Friday night and Saturday and Sunday, all of those meals, are you really tracking them? Are you eyeballing them? And you're sort of just second guessing it. Are you really being as consistent as you can? So call yourself out on your bullshit. Be as objective as you can. It doesn't mean you're gonna fix it immediately. It doesn't mean it's all of a sudden gonna get better. You have to actually put in the work. Like I have to put in serious work now. It's one thing to be objective and say, hey, I need to get better with my sleep. It's another thing for me to be at home working midnight and say, you know what? I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna go to bed or not. You know, I gotta, I gotta call myself on it and actually do it. So that's what I need to work on. I'm gonna be very honest with you. The next time I update you, I'll tell you if I've been doing it or not, and we'll go from there. But let me know in the comment section, what are you going to improve on? What are you going to be objective about? What do you need to get better at? And how are you going to fix it? Let me know in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. Hit the like button. Actually, it really does help a lot. And just, I want to say from the bottom of my heart and from Rico as well, we really, really appreciate you subscribing, you interacting, sharing the videos. It's been, honestly, it's been incredible to see how much the channel has grown, how much the interaction has grown. It's been great speaking with all of you. So thank you so, so much. It's been just a pleasure and a, and a huge blessing. So thank you. And we are very excited to continue making more content for you as the months go on. Love you. Talk to you soon.